Okay. So I know we're going to have a fantastic discussion today, and I so appreciate you all taking the time to chat with us. As I mentioned in this episode, we're exploring the topic of eminent domain valuations with a particular emphasis on the role technology plays in this complex appraisal sector. Now, as you're aware, eminent domain is a hot topic um, in today's market. So infrastructure development initiatives have surged that's driving demand for eminent domain proceedings nationwide. Additionally, evolving legal standards, Eric's expertise, have increased the complexity of many cases leading to involved and extended litigation processes. So with mounting challenges and increased volume, all of us are looking for ways to streamline our businesses and drive efficiency. And that's where technology can play an important role for valuation professionals. Now, just as technology has revolutionized the general appraisal industry, it too can drive significant progress in eminent domain in areas such as data collection and processing, precise property analytics, and rapid report production. And so with that, let's jump in and talk eminent domain. Angela, why don't you kick us off? Um, let's start for, for everybody here, because I know there's a lot of people um, watching that are new-ish to eminent domain. So let's start right. by defining exactly what eminent domain valuations entail and what some of the different practice variations are within eminent domain. Great, yeah, thank you for this opportunity. Really, eminent domain work entails establishing the fair market value for a proposed acquisition. Sometimes that can be a full acquisition or an appraisal of the entire property. Um, other times it can be a partial take analysis where the agency is proposing to acquire a portion of the property. Um, whether a part take analysis, um, you have to really fully analyze the remainder parcel and being able to really understand how that project is going to impact the property. Um, and that needs to be done in California. Um, so both before and after benefits and benefits can really only offset damages for California work. Um, some specialties in eminent domain work could be based on project types, whether mm -hmm. that be railroad projects, uh, water projects, uh, pipeline projects. There's a variety of different possible specialties with eminent domain work. Fantastic. Yep. And certainly, um, you know, just to jump on a little bit of what Angela said, specialization could really come in the form of the methodology as well. Um, the methodology we use in eminent domain is different than, you know, a standard appraisal for, say, lending purposes. Um, there's a lot of rules that we need to follow, and those rules um, can be different if it's the the issue is um, related to a federal taking or a state taking. So we've got federal and state rules for sure. And so um, specialization really also comes down to understanding the appropriate rules to follow. Uh, so in California, we've got uh, the civil code of um, uh, the code of civil procedure, excuse me, uh, which outlines a number of those rules. You also have um, in that section the definition of fair market value. And so for an end-domain work, at least in California, a part of the definition of fair market value is, is highest price as opposed to say most probable price in, in a different format. Um, so we're really, as experts, really needing to understand what the rules are um, in the jurisdiction you're working in. Okay. I would say that there are two distinct categories in appraisals for right of way and eminent domain purposes. One is at the acquisition level. There's an agency that needs a new bridge or a new road and so an appraisal will be done to estimate what the value of those rights being acquired are. The next level, if the property owner just so happens to disagree with that opinion and um, a condemnation action is filed and it goes through the eminent domain process, then the events start all over again, where there is an appraisal for the agency side that may or may not go to trial. There's a appraisal for the property owner um, in essence, there are at least three appraisals that can be done for a particular process. And so having a specialty at the acquisition level, knowing what the rules are, having expertise at that second level where there's testimony uh, taken, um, real understanding of the case law, like what Matt was referring to is needed, a um, couple of different nuances that make it different from uh, appraisal work for lending purposes or estate and tax or other different realms. 
Fantastic. Okay. So lots of things to consider. It sounds like we know the appraisal sector in general has a lot of rules, but even more apply within eminent domain and they can vary state by state or if it's a state versus federal engagement. Um, and then, as I understand it, it, as you were speaking to Eric, once you get into the litigation piece, if you can't reach agreement, then that's like a whole new ball game. <laughs> Certainly. Correct? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, a lot of the times um, the parties can come together and come to an agreement about the value of those rights being acquired. But there are some instances where depending on the methodology used or the data considered, the value opinions can be millions of dollars apart. I've seen instances where one side is at 4 million and the other side is at 100 million. And it comes down to a couple of different things. Um, but just understanding that methodology, what rules are in place, what, what jurisdiction you're in, um, what Matt alluded to is there are certain rules depending on um, appraising property at the federal level versus in your individual state. Um, just having that knowledge and expertise is critical when you're doing this type of work. Okay, so many reasons why eminent domain is really considered a specialty. Um, anyone have anything else to build on? I mean, do you all practice across areas or do you really find that people have to specialize within eminent domain to truly deliver the value that's expected? I think it's different for each of us, right? Yeah. Uh, so a lot of my work is is local. It's it's California and specifically Southern California. Um, but I'm often representing either an agency or a property owner. And so it's a local issue for me. I imagine, um, you know, for Eric, who's coming in on the litigation side, he might be reviewing reports all over the country. Yeah, certainly. Um, you know, there may, there may be certain rules that need to be known or followed and you can get an assistance from uh, your client. I mean, you definitely have to be confident to do the kind of work uh, if it's out of town, but our work spreads across the country. Um, federal matters, local matters, um, a lot of it on the forensic review side, but some appraisal work as well. Um, it really starts with that foundation, which is, all right, what's, what is the appraisal problem that needs to be solved? And am I the right fit for that uh, particular assignment? I'm similar to Matt. I do work uh, mostly except on Northern California, but I do also work in Southern California from time to time. So my license is in California and a lot of my work is agency. Um, however, I do also represent property owners as well. Okay, so lots of specialization within eminent domain. So understand the different areas. And then for those people who are looking at this as a potential area to expand, it really is about understanding what you can specialize in and then learn all the nuances of that. Certainly. Okay. So getting a little more personal, um, what do you like best about practicing within eminent domain? Why did you choose that as your professional focus? Stay in it. Um, and maybe you can share, you know, you, you already talked a little bit about the specific areas that you practice in, but maybe highlight a few of the key traits that you think are critical for success in your area of specialization. Eric, do you want to kick us off? I know you are highly specialized. Um, special. Um, We're all so special. Yeah. Um, what I like about this kind of work is that it really makes you think. Um, you are like analyzing rights for a project that's not built yet. And so trying to understand what that looks like and what impacts, if any, that project has on a property, it's really it's really a brain teaser sometimes. Um, I have yet to come across uh, the same set of facts for a particular assignment um, in my 15 years of doing this. Um, it's really unique every time. Um, there's certainly challenges and we're all part of the greater picture, which is there will be this project built that's meant to serve the public good and to be a part of that's kind of exciting. I'm sure everyone has that story where you're driving on the freeway and you say, hey, I appraised that over there. And then whoever you're with doesn't really care, but uh, it's just something that you're a part of. And um, that's what makes it interesting and unique and fun. 
you just have to share something weird about the building, right? Do you know what yeah, they had in the yeah. basement? Um, and, and I have no kids, matter. and they, they can hardly care, care less. But yeah. my wife, um, my wife you know, can care less. Keep the conversation going. Yeah. Something. <laughs> 100%. Unless you're in the car with another appraiser, I don't think yeah. anyone no, no really understands it, that. <laughs> uh, I'll jump in. Um, you know, I enjoy, like Eric was saying, each each issue is completely different from the next. And so there's a challenge every time getting up to speed, trying to understand the issues of the project and how you're going to deal with it from a reasonable standpoint. <clears throat> the, other, the other aspect that I enjoy, uh, although it can be somewhat painful, is, is your work is immediately challenged. Um, you know, unlike working for, say, an estate where the attorney likes the value, doesn't care about the report, it goes in a file and it's gone and you never hear about it from again. Uh, in eminent domain work, you're going to hear about your results really quickly. You're going to get feedback from your client uh, and then immediately from the other side. Um, there's going to be a challenge uh, as far as, um, you know, whether things you're at your work is, is correct or you're, you're providing good arguments, but there's a chance to learn from that and um, improve the way you tell the story, improve the way that you create arguments uh, in your appraisal work. So there's immediate feedback and, and ability to learn from that. Yeah, absolutely. I think I've learned um, quite a lot with my ability to explain certain aspects of the right-of-way process, especially the remainder, from going through the external review process and really having an external reviewer read my assignment and say, I think you could beef it up a little bit more here. Let's talk about this. And um, it's really only benefited me. So the, the multiple reviews is is something that is definitely beneficial uh, with right-of-way work, but it can be tough. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so it sounds like it's tough, but there's a lot of personal benefits and then it's very mentally t challenging and there's a high level of rigor and there's a very high level of diversity around the sorts of things that you will, the sorts of problems you will get to solve for. You guys are all like chief problem solvers, it sounds like to me. <laughs> so it's it's it comes down to yep. it's, it's like <laughs> yep. find the right problem. And sometimes in matters like this, the problem could be identified differently by the parties. Um, and so that's one, um, unique aspect of this is what facts am I working with? Um, I'm valuing these certain rights, but do I have all the facts? Am I, is access going to be allowed um, in the after condition for this particular property? Um, will this impact any development potential? How long is that project? Am I just going to sit on this vacant piece of land for five to 10 years while this project gets built? Um, there's a lot of different aspects that are uh, protracted sometimes and just being able to understand all that when doing your work is something that is also unique. You know, a lot of times for other types of appraisal work, you go in to the appraisal, it may take a day, it may take a few weeks, um, and then you're out and then you may not see it again. There are projects that I'm still working on that have been going on for years and there will go on for much longer than that just because of the complexities with um, the projects being built or the certain facts that are in place. Um, so just having that understanding that sometimes these things can take a while um, is also a unique aspect of, of this type of appraisal work. That's how we all start out, right? We all start out at that level, very minimal understanding of what the issues are, um, but through being involved in these organizations and going to speaking engagements or speaking yourself, your ability to, to learn more about the uh, the topic grows each time. Absolutely. I love that about the appraisal industry in general is you all share so much knowledge compared to other industries. Um, so it's just, it's really nice to see how much you all band together.